All right, fam, we started from the bottom, now we're here. This is our final off the mat chakra class in this series. If you haven't caught the rest of them, know that all of the other off the mat chakra classes are here on my channel to support you. Okay, so today we're gonna dive into the crown chakra, Sahasrara. If you've been curious about this energy center and how to optimize it and open it, and if you've been searching for lifestyle tips to start the process, I've got you covered. In today's video, we're gonna discuss all of this, and I really recommend that you find a writing utensil and a journal so you can jot down the notes that are most resonant for you. Anytime we take notes, we connect with the information or and are able to digest it that much more. And if you're not officially part of our yoga fam, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell so that you're notified every time I post a new video helping you practice yoga on and off your mat. Now, I'm really not gonna sugarcoat it like I used to. I used to really shy away from owning the fact that I love teaching the chakra system, but not anymore, right? This is one of my favorite topics to cover here on my YouTube channel with you inside the Body Mind Soul Studio at all of our in-person yoga retreats and at our biannual Body Mind Soul Detox Challenge, where we help yogis just like you over the period of seven days build a holistic toolkit so they can really make the shift from practicing watered down yoga to leveraging yoga as this on and off the mat transformative tool and practice. Now, if you're new around here and you're like, what are the chakras I'm feeling in over my head? I want you to pause or at the very least bookmark these two videos here and here that are gonna introduce you to the basics and also commit to journeying through my two free chakra challenges that are here on my YouTube channel. They are community favorites. Now to get started, let's really lay the foundation and learn key basics. So the Sanskrit term for the crown chakra is Sahasrara, and it means thousand fold lotus. The location is the top of the head and it's also connected to your cerebral cortex and your nervous system. The element is thought. Thinking is the activity. This is your universal or spiritual identity, and it's your right to understand. Also, the color is purple. Now, the purpose here or goal is to really develop your awareness, your understanding, and your spiritual connection. And the wound or shadow that we're working against is attachment. Those are the basics. But why do people want to heal or optimize their chakras? And how the heck does it get out of balance in the first place? Well, I want you to start thinking about the chakras as these spinning vortexes that exist within your subtle body or what's known as the pranamaya kosha. And they're really tasked with acting as the managers of your energy, both happening internally and externally, both what has happened in the past and what's currently happening. And the chakras typically operate in one of three key states, okay? So the first one is balanced, the second one is excess, and the third one is deficient. And as we can all assume here, balanced is the goal. Deficient or excess states really develop largely as coping or defense mechanisms based on you and I's childhood conditioning, programming, and experiences that were repeated often enough that then they became encoded or embedded as our adult ways of thinking, feeling, and being. Now, when we choose to work with the chakra system, which is an energetic system, the goal is to understand, okay, what state is my crown chakra in? Why is that? And then make lifestyle adjustments to really reclaim and regain neutrality or balance. So let's start with the direction that we're wanting to head in and cover balanced crown chakra qualities. All right, so get that writing utensil ready. A balanced crown chakra. You have the ability to learn new information and gain new knowledge, but not necessarily on a surface level. You're able to take the material one step further by transforming it into wisdom. So from only knowing something intellectually to really understanding it experientially. Really difficult, I struggle with that one. You also have the ability 
to observe and witness and pay attention to what's happening internally and externally without reacting. There's this pause that you've built in. When we're balanced here, we've also got this really strong spiritual connection. We believe in a higher power and we experience our life and others and this whole universe as sacred. Meditation is also part of your on the mat experience and you regularly prioritize it so that you can have mental emotional clarity and so that ideas and downloads and solutions to challenges can appear, right? So meditation is a key practice that you are using and leveraging. Now, because of everything I just mentioned, when you're in a balanced state, you're more aware, more present and living more mindfully at large. So overall, working with the crown chakra is less about healing and more about this revealing, uncovering, developing and building your capacity for this level of living. So that was the balanced basics. Let's look at a deficient crown chakra or one that's contracted or offline. And these are teachings from Anadea Judith and Ashley Turner, who I've studied with. So often when we're in a deficient state, it presents itself as this know-it-all, need to be right, cynical mindset or attitude. Know anyone like that? There's also a resistance to gaining new knowledge or learning new things. And when you're deficient, you really are operating in this closed-minded vacuum. There's also a belief in limitations like I'll never make it, that will never happen. And finally, there's spiritual skepticism. And people who are deficient here are often spiritually disconnected. So do any of these resonate with you, right? There's no right, wrong, good or bad. We're simply building awareness, which is a superpower of the crown chakra. For me, the one that resonates is, um, it's not that I have an adversity to learning new knowledge, but more so I struggle with retaining it and integrating it into wisdom so that when I share it or speak it or teach it, true transmission happens. What about you? Let me know in the comments which of the deficient qualities that I just lifted, list, listed off. I'm struggling to talk. Which of the qualities that I listed off, did they resonate with you? So tell me, okay? So let's look at the opposite end of the spectrum, excess. And this is when a chakra is like too online or it's overloaded with this type of energy. And it's not able to function properly. So when you're in excess mode, people often distance themselves from the worldly demands and retreat to the safety of their heads, right? They don't wanna be here on the earth plane. It's easier to live up here. You can also be overly intellectual or constantly learning and gaining new knowledge. That's another sign of being excess. You're not giving yourself time to really integrate the material or you're kind of hiding in that space of always learning. You can also experience overwhelm, frustration, confusion, or spaciness, which then can cause chronic stress to be present. There can also be an addiction to spirituality, so spiritual bypassing, with a lack of connection to the material, earthly world that we live in, right? That we have to be part of. And finally, it can be really difficult to create on the earth plane and bring ideas from consciousness into reality. Again, here where we exist. So now that we've covered balance, deficient and excess crown chakra qualities, Let's talk about how we can orient ourselves towards lifestyle practices that will guide us back towards a sattvic state or a balanced place. So number one, setting a daily intention, preferably in the morning to really anchor your awareness and spend time with yourself in the present moment, right? develop that spiritual nature. If you're someone who tracks towards living in your head, I want you to take breaks from learning and reading and instead find ways to re-enter and re-inhabit your body. Get grounded, reconnect with the earth plane. All right, so you probably wanna go to my root chakra teachings here on my YouTube channel. You also wanna to commit to befriending your belief system and really tending to your psychic garden, pulling out the belief weeds and planting positive, prosperous ways of thinking. That's a huge one. Now, if learning is difficult for you, I want you to explore a new learning discipline. Even if that feels scary, choose one and commit to it 
until you not only understand it, but you've integrated it. If spirituality is lacking from your life, choose a spiritual discipline like yoga, again, to commit to. Another way to bring spirituality into your life is to attend a retreat, join faith-based services or communities, or find and participate in a gathering to strengthen and fortify that spiritual connection. Finally, whether you're deficient or excess, I want you to develop a regular meditation practice. This is the number one recommendation for developing your crown chakra energy center as suggested by Anadea Judith, which in my book, she's the chakra queen. So of these lifestyle practices that I've mentioned here, which one do you most need? Tell me in the comments. For myself, my meditation practice has really developed over the years. So I'm going to say joining a local spiritual gathering is going to help me care for my crown chakra and also my heart chakra too. So it's like a double whammy. What about you? Okay, so we did it. That was the crown chakra off the mat lesson. Like I said, we started from the bottom and now we're here. Thank you so much for going on this journey with me. And if you're into this, if you're into going beyond the pose and you like the idea of practicing holistic yoga and tapping into yoga psychology systems, I highly encourage you to download my yoga reset guide. It's a seven step journey through the chakra system. That's going to help recenter your body, mind, and soul, and really invite you to build that holistic toolkit that I keep referring to. It's got on the mat yoga classes, energy aligning exercises, self-reflection journal prompts and affirmations. And it's really an approachable way to start doing this work today on and off your mat with me. So details to download that guide are in the description below. Now, give me some feedback, okay? We've gone through each of the chakras here off the mat. And so I would love to know, how are you feeling about this content? Give me a thumbs up. Tell me what you learned in the comments or tell me what you would like to see more of or why you didn't really resonate with this. Either way, thanks so much for being here. And like I always end my videos with, now the real work begins, okay? So you're gonna take these crown chakra teachings off the mat, off the cushion, off the screen, and into your daily life.